Hello guys. Today I am going to start the discussion on the medium axis control sub layer. The medium axis sub layer is a part of the data link layer. It deals with how to determine that who may use the channel next when the network consists of a single shared channel. The layer is also known as medium axis control sub layer. Networks can be divided into two categories. Those using point to point connections and those using broadcast channels. In any broadcast network, the key issue is to determine who gets to use the channel when there is a competition among the users about the use of channel. To make this point clear, consider a conference call between five people. And these five people are on different telephones. All they are connected so that each one can hear and talk to all the others. It is very likely that when one of them stops speaking, two or more will start talking at the same time. And this will cause the interference. When only a single channel is available, Determining who goes next is a much harder. The protocols used to determine who goes next on a multi-access channel belongs to sublayer of the data link layer called as MAC sublayer. And the MAC sublayer is especially important in LANs where multi-access channel is used as a basis for communication. Then the channel allocation problem. The central theme here is to allocate a single broadcast channel among the multiple users. There are two conventions. First convention is static channel allocation and second one is dynamic channel allocation. First we will see static channel allocation. The traditional way of allocating a single channel among multiple competing users is frequency division multiplexing that is FDM and example of such channel is telephone trunk. If there are n users, the bandwidth is divided into n equal sized portions and each user being assigned with a one portion. Since each user has a private frequency band, there is no interference between the users. When there are only a small and constant number of users and they are having the heavy traffic, then FDM is a simple and efficient channel allocation mechanism. Then we will see what are the problems with FDM. When the number of senders is large and continuously varying or the traffic is busty, then FDM presents some problems. If the spectrum is cut into n regions and Fewer than n users are currently interested in communicating, then the large piece of valuable spectrum will be get wasted. If more than n users want to communicate, some of them will be de denied the permission for communication due to lack of bandwidth. Then, even assuming that the number of users could somehow be held constant at n, Dividing the single available channel into static sub-channels is an inefficient technique. The basic problem is that when one users or some users are not transmitting or not using their bandwidth, that bandwidth is get simply lost. There are not, if they are not using that bandwidth and that bandwidth we cannot able to allocate to the another user also. Then the poor risk performance of the static FDM can easily be seen from a simple queuing theory calculation. Let us start with a mean time delay, that is T, for a channel capacity of C bits per second with an arrival rate of lambda frames per second, each frame having a length drawn from an exponential probability density function with mean 1 upon mu bits per frame. With these parameters, the arrival rate lambda frames per second and the service rate is mu c frames per second, we can able to write 
equation t is equal to 1 upon mu c minus lambda. For example, if c is 100 Mbps, the mean frame length 1 upon mu is 10,000 bits and the frame arrival rate lambda is 5,000 frames per second. Then we will get the value of t is equal to 200 microsecond. Note that if we ignore the queuing delay and just ask how long it takes to send the 10,000 bits frame on a 100 Mbps network, then we will get the answer 100 microsecond and which is the incorrect answer. Now let's divide a single channel into n independent subchannels, each with capacity n c by n bits per second. The mean input rate on each of the subchannels will be now lambda by n. And if equation for t is written here, t of dm is equal to 1 upon mu c by n minus lambda by n, which is equal to n upon mu c minus lambda, which we will get n into t. That is here, the mean delay using FTM is n times worse than if all the frames were somehow magically arranged orderly in big central queue. The whatever arguments that are applied to FDM are also applicable to time division multiplexing technique. In time division multiplexing, a time frame is divided into n equal sub time slots and each sub time slot is allocated among the individual users. If a user does not use the allocated time slot, it is get wasted. The same thing holds, holds if we split up the network physically. In this example, suppose 100 Mbps network is divided into 10 networks, each supports the 10 Mbps bitrate. And suppose statistically, use each user is allocated to use the one of the network, then mean delay would jump from 200 microsecond to 2 millisecond. Still performance degradation is increasing. Then we will see dynamic channel allocation. There are some key assumptions about the dynamic channel allocation and these assumptions are, first assumption is station model. The model consists of n independent stations, each with a program or user that generates frames for transmission. Stations are sometimes called terminals. The probability of a frame being generated in an interval of length delta t is lambda into delta t. Here, lambda is constant, that is the frame arrival rate. Once the frame has been generated, the station is blocked and does not do anything or does not do anything until the frame has been successfully transmitted. Next is single channel assumption. The single channel is available for all communication. All stations can transmit on it and all can receive from it. As far as the hardware is considered, all stations are equivalent, although protocol software may assign priorities to different stations. And that priorities may be different priorities. Then collision assumption. If two frames are transmitted simultaneously, the overlap in the time and the resulting signal is grambled. This event is called a collision. All stations can detect collisions. A collided frame must be retransmitted again later. There are no errors other than those generated by collisions. In continuous time, in this assumption, frame transmission can begin at any instant. There is no master clock dividing time into discrete intervals. The next assumption is a slotted time. In this assumption, time is divided into discrete intervals, that is the time slots. 
fem retransmissions always begins at the start of the slot a slot may contain zero one or more frames corresponding to ideal slot there may be a successful transmission or there may be a collision the next one is the carrier sense assumption station can tell if the channel is in use before trying to use it if the channel is sensed busy no station will attempt to use that channel until it goes idle then no carrier sense stations cannot sense the channel before trying to use it they just go ahead and transmit the frames only later can be determined whether the transmission was successful this is about channel allocation problem and channel allocation methods thank you